Hi everyone. So in this video, we'll have a discussion <clears throat> on the impact of depth, right? So uh, if I want to make a decision about how deep a neural network uh, should be for a given problem, how, how should I make this decision? So one thing to notice other than the obvious thing that depth involves more nonlinear transformations than if you have just a one layer network with, uh, with one uh, layer of nonlinear activation functions. The other significant thing is that uh, to notice that depth significantly reduces the number of parameters in the network with fixing the, uh, the, uh, the number of neurons in the network. So, for example, take the following two examples of network, each having 2000 neurons or 2000 units. So the first one has only a one layer network right so it's just a one layer network now so just before uh, i get into this discussion let's remember from the last video the universal approximation theorem that says that in theory i really need all i need is one uh, layer with nonlinear activations to approximate any function and then we went into the discussion of maybe that nonlinear layer will have a lot of neurons to approximate the function, so that's where depth kicks in. So this is just to put the, this example into perspective. So let's say I have 2,000 neurons, one layer network, so 1,000, 1,000, right? So, and uh, I have a fully connected layer between them, right? So that means I have 1,000 times 1,000 weight parameters or 1 million weight parameters. Right now, let's say I rearrange these 2000 neurons in a different way. I rearrange them into hundreds. So I have 20 of them. So I have a 20 layer network and then in each layer is fully connected. So I have 19 uh, intermediary layers between the layers of neurons and each of these 19 have 100 times 100. So 10,000 weight parameters. So in total, I have 190,000 weight parameters, right? So this is the same number of neurons. So imagine these 2,000 neurons are all hidden neurons, and I want to know whether to arrange them in two layers, or in, uh, in, in two layers of neurons and one layer of connections, or I want to arrange them in uh, 20 layer of neurons and 19 layer of connections, right? So the deeper network has much less weight parameters. Right. So the hypothesis space corresponding to the deeper network is a much simpler hypothesis space. Now, which choice is better? Right. So and again, that will come back to the question that we always discuss. Is it better to have a more complex hypothesis space or a simpler hypothesis space? And we always say that the answer depends, depends on the nature of the problem and depends on the available computational resources. Right. So a deeper network will typically have fewer parameters that may lead it to generalize much better, right? Because when I learn, when I enforce simplicity on the learning problem, I am enforcing uh, abstracting concepts, right? So I take from the network the luxury to overfit or to custom tailor the solution to the exact training data that it sees. And I enforce simplicity, so the network has to abstract concept because it doesn't have the power to learn exactly what happened in every training example, right? But that also makes it harder to optimize, right? So imagine this 2000 neuron example, right? Here I have, when I have one layer between 1000 and 1000, right? This is a 1 million dimensional space of parameters, right? The 1 million parameters here. Here I have a much lesser number of parameters, right? So the dimensionality of the hypothesis space is much smaller, right? But it's the same problem. So I have this smaller hypothesis space and I'm steering it towards what I think is the right direction. If this optimization process is clever enough, then that could be a much better process in terms of generalization and in terms of computational complexity, right? And it can also, by, by computational complexity, I mean a reduction in training time, right? But I deprive the network from the luxury of exploring more options, which what the shallower and the shallower network with more uh, parameters would do, right? So the question here becomes a question of available computational resources, 
because if computational resources are abundant, are abundant, then maybe depth would introduce complexity in the optimization that I don't need. Right? If the computational resources are limited, so actually the exploration of the large hypothesis space with the shallower network can be impossible. So in that case, it could be even the case that the shallower network is harder to optimize because there is no computational resources available to explore the whole uh, space offered by its parameters. Thank you.